Hi, I'm Kendall, and this is week six of Kendall Writes a Story. Welcome back to my writing space. I hope you're having a good week, and I hope you are ready for a fun treasure hunt of a story, because that's the one we're going to work on today. So this story that we're working on this week that we're going to block out, one of our five stories. Um, and by the way, if you're new to the show, definitely start checking that out. Last week we did The Republic, and this week we are doing this fun story. Um, so this is actually very loosely based on the first story I ever wrote, the one that started this about nine months ago. Um, it was a short story, it was a mystery, it takes place fully in a bar in Silicon Valley, and uh, it's, a, it's a fun little treasure hunt. Uh, but it's not very good. <laughs> it's just not, it's not great. And so I kind of want to use it as this tool that I can look back on. I can see the first story that I wrote, which was to the best of my ability at that time, like I tried really hard. And then now I'm gonna try it again, and I'll probably do it a couple more times, and I think it'll be really fun to watch it grow. So that's what we're gonna start doing today. Uh, this will be a two-parter just like last time, so we'll do an episode today, and then a new episode later in the week, most likely on Friday, uh, that will show the story complete. So let's go ahead and jump in to the treasure of the Sierra Padre. Ah! Okay, so just like last time, we're gonna start off with our brainstorming technique where we uh, develop a high concept idea. Um, and remember, a high concept idea, it usually has these four components, right? You have the fish out of water, you have the hook, you have the looming conflict, and then you have the theme. Right, and so a, a high concept idea is usually a, a sentence or two um, that, that will cover most of the movie. It's how you pitch it, uh, pitch it to people. Hey, you wanna go see a movie? What's it about? Oh, well, uh, it's about uh, these two folks that meet on the Titanic and they fall in love just as it crashes. That's the high concept idea. And I kinda, I kinda just threw that together off the top of my head because Titanic was on TV earlier. Um, but a massaged high concept idea, and even in that crappy one I just threw out, you can probably start sussing out the four components. What's the hook? The hook is they're on the Titanic, and that's kind of cool. So let's go back and visit the Titanic in this fun story, right? Uh, what's the looming conflict? Uh, they're gonna crash into an iceberg, right? And that was, that was in that high concept idea part. Um, who's the fish out of water? It's the two star-crossed lovers, right? They both are doing separate paths and then they meet one another and just turns their, their lives away, right? So high concept idea, when two lovers meet for the first time aboard the fateful Titanic, chaos ensues. High concept idea, right? So that's what we're doing here. Um, so the, uh, you know, for me, what I found the easiest way to start is to kind of start off with the character. What's fish out of water? And so that's what I'm, I'm playing with here is, okay, you know, the, the very easy ways for me to start off brainstorming these is just start off the, the, the super opposites, right? A rich guy who becomes poor, <laughs> an employed workaholic who gets fired, right? Those are pretty boring because they're just so cookie cutter and so nuanced and, and, and just not very realistic. So. I'll start massaging them, but those are, for me, that's where I like to start. Okay, it's a rich person who loses all their money. Okay, let's massage that. It's a banker who gets swindled out of their money. Okay, let's massage that a little more. It's a banker who uh, has an affair and gets uh, blackmailed. Okay, right, now, again, that is still pretty cheesy and, and, and pretty overdone. But that's that's kind of like, what. A, what I like to do here. And this is for me is, is, is quite a fun, it's very low pressure, uh, right? If you like to drink, grab a beer, it's that kind of just like move around, get some different ideas. Uh, I like to, you'll see me at different places because I like to be kind of limited because it's a pandemic and all that, but uh, I do still like to um, move around as much as I can. It's not like I can go to a coffee shop or a library or anything uh, now, at least out here in California. But uh, I can certainly look at a different wall <laughs> every now and then. And a lot of times I'll put different things on the television. Uh, maybe I'll just go to YouTube and put on uh, scenes from a library. Uh, or maybe a lot of times, which is kind of cool, people 
when they're walking in towns or in different areas, they will just record themselves walking. So uh, there's one that I like of uh, cities in snow, and it'll just be people walking uh, in in their city for hours. And so I'll do that just to kind of like mix it up so that I get different stimulation. My brain is thinking in different ways. I'm getting different senses activated. Uh, if I'm in California that doesn't see snow, I can see snow, and you know that that makes an, a, a difference, uh, at least for me. And, oh yeah, let's do a winter scene. I haven't had winter in four years. So, you know, that's not gonna be top of mind, but a winter scene might be the best thing. Um, so so I, I really like to mix it up that way and, and you kind of have to be a little creative nowadays. Um, but yeah, so now you'll see me, uh, you know, this is another technique I've kind of developed. Um, I love your tips and thoughts. A lot of these are just kind of made up, but um, I tend to be a fan when I'm trying to figure out options. I tend to be a fan, as you'll see here on the right, of building out these um, these sort of binary charts. So in this instance, I'm trying to, in this instance rather, I'm trying to uh, figure out how someone learns about an inheritance. And so you'll see me um, here, is it intentional or is it not intentional? Um, and are you an heir or are you not an heir? And so I've sort of made this grid here of, okay, what are the reasons uh, that it would be intentional and an heir? Who, who could it be? And not intentional and an heir, right? Not intentional, not an heir, so on and so forth. And then right in the middle of all of this, as I'm just trying to like sort it out, our good cat, Ellie Cat, decided to come say hello and help out. And, uh, you know, we got her off and uh, she played around and she <laughs> came right back. She is a natural rider, but uh, now she's back. Get away. Now she's gone. She's actually watching me at this moment. <laughs> Watch her which is also intriguing. So anyway, back to the story. We're, um, so now that I've kind of sorted those details out, uh, Ellie Cat, as well as the story, I'm now going back, kind of plugging in. I've, I've, in this case, I figured out, okay, I want my person to be on the not an air, uh, but directly told. That's where I, f I find the most intriguing. They don't have anything to gain or much that we can see, but they, uh, uh, but they were told for a reason. Um, now, what I haven't sorted out is were they told from a trustworthy pur purpose or non-trustworthy, right? Because, and that's, if you saw, I had like a little micro grids in there and that was me fleshing out for each option, the good option, the bad option, the evil option, and the benign, right? So a person that's benign, a person that's good, a person that's bad, and a person that's just downright evil. Um, so in this case, I chose benign uh, actor. And so I'm putting all the details together and you can see me right here on the top right. I finally figured out the clue uh, or the, the key piece here to kind of make it all work into a story, right? And so next episode, what we're gonna do is focus on building that story out into the three parts. Um, if you remember the way we do that, it was we do beginning, middle, and end. And then each of those, we have five key beats that we have to hit. So that's what we'll do on next episode is actually start fleshing the story out just like we did for the Republic. And then questions, comments, all of that. I bet you are very curious to know what the story is. And here we are with it. So let's read it off to you. After a chance encounter, a down and out engineer is given the chance of a lifetime to interview with Silicon Valley's most prestigious firm. The catch? He has to solve a hundred year old Sierra Nevada gold treasure hunt. Dun dun dun! So the genre, it's a crime murder mystery, cozy murder, murder mystery. Uh, we'll get into that actually next time. Until then, have a great week. Take care of yourselves and the people around you and mask up. Be respectful. I don't know what else. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> Take care. Bye.